As we all know, Android is a soft proprietary operating system. Only the base, AOSP, is open source, but Google Play services and a ton of other components are proprietary, and Google makes sure that the OS needs these to function for a normal person. This is why people often not only don't know, but don't want to try to de-Google their phone. But I've been wanting to try this for a while, and I I finally de-googled mine. Here's my experience. To support the channel, you can like, subscribe, donate, or leave a comment. I always hold them. Thank you. This video is going to be not only a software review, but also a small hardware review because for the googling, I bought a new phone. We're talking about a refurbished Google Pixel 5. Now, if you're new to Android modding, I'm letting you know that it is possible to de-google your phone via different methods. The most common one is by unlocking the bootloader and flashing a custom ROM that does not have GMS and may or may not include Micro-G, an open source replacement for the services, for those apps that don't want to work without them. Examples of these are Lineage OS, Aero OS and other vanilla AOSP ROMs. If you have more experience, you could even root your phone and get rid of GMS as they're a system app and apply a patch to enable signature spoofing to let your phone use micro G in your stock operating system. But the best, easiest and safest approach is to buy a Google Pixel and flash one of the privacy oriented ROMs. For example, you have Calyx OS that includes Micro G on AOSP and some other goodies. EOTE OS also offers a similar experience. EOS is based on Lineage OS and offers a very similar experience to iPhones with a custom launcher and apps. I could even make a video comparing all of these, but let me know. And here I found a gold mine as I have fallen in love with this phone. It has everything I want, a good enough processor, that is a Snapdragon from the 700 series, a great 90Hz OLED display with symmetrical bezels, 8GB of RAM, and 128GB of storage, decent cameras that can at least record at 4K30, and some great dual speakers. The best of all is the size only 6 inches. I love small phones. The price was also impressive at barely $150 to $200. The phone runs very smoothly without stutters or freezes. I didn't even notice the difference in refresh rate coming from a 120Hz display, so it is a really good thing. I decided to flash Graphene OS, the most private and secure mobile OS in history. It is based on AOSP, ships the latest updates quickly allows for bootloader relocking, which is one of the main reasons why most of these ROMs are available only for pixels and does not have micro G. But let's instead install directly a sandboxed version of the play services, which in most cases means perfect compatibility in contrast with micro G that sometimes tends to fail while making sure that these services don't have system privileges to spy on you. Installation was a little messy. You can use the web installer for Graphene OS, and for most people that should work fine, but for me it didn't. I don't know if it was the cable that was a different one because it was a refurbished phone, but I tried it with an Android phone, a Fedora desktop, which is unsupported so it was not surprising that it didn't work and I was gonna try it with Chrome OS and I'm sure it would have worked but the Chromebook I had had so little storage available that the system didn't fit. 
I asked for help in the Matrix community and they were very helpful and polite. They gave me a bunch of options but none of them worked. So I was forced to try the CLI installer and this one worked really well. In Linux, you just have to connect your phone, download the script, give it executable permissions and run it. It will do everything by itself including relocking the bootloader. I had an issue with the Wi-Fi connection initially, but it got resolved by just rebooting my router. So I don't think it had a lot to do with the OS. The first thing you're gonna see are the stock apps in a black background. I'm guessing that the black background is to avoid fingerprinting by wallpaper, which means that some apps can identify your device based on your wallpaper, but if it's a black one or a very basic one, it is less unique so prevents you from being identified. You have an app manager that updates the stock apps and lets you download the sandbox services, auditor that lets you verify a device, the AOSP calculator, clock, context, files, gallery, phone, settings, and messaging apps. A PDF reader is included which is nice. The Graphene OS camera is not the AOSP camera. It is an improved version that is actually based on the Camera X API, so it means better quality and support. Compared to the stock proprietary G cam, it is clearly not as good, mainly with noise reduction. But to me, it looks pretty good regardless, as long as you have the right lighting conditions. You can even record at 4K. I recorded a video for an hour and the phone got considerably hot and the battery decreased like 20%. It wasn't so hot to the point where everything got slowed down, but it was noticeable. I don't know if it was a mix of the electronic and optical video stabilization, but the stabilization is just really good. Even though if you don't care about it being proprietary, you should be able to install the stock Google Gcam. The default web browser is Vanadium. It is a fork of Chromium, so it has no Google features, but it works pretty much like Chrome. I'm a desktop Firefox user, but in mobile, I used to install Brave or other Chromium open source browser because Firefox in mobile just lacks a lot of features. Vanadium has enhanced to the privacy and security, you have some like blocking screenshots which sometimes can be annoying, but you can bypass it by taking the screenshot from the sharing menu. I like Vanadium, but it would be great to have extension support, which I doubt they will add, so a built-in ad blocker and a feature to force all websites to dark theme would be great. I'm so used to these things that without them, the modern web is unbearable. <laughs> Another cool thing to have would be a bottom search bar. The phone is not very big, but it would still be nice to have. To install apps, I use mainly Droidify, a better, more modern looking client for F-Droid. In case that you don't know what this is, it is a repository of only open source apps. Most of what I use nowadays is open source, so I don't need the Play Store that much. But in case that you do need it, some proprietary apps that are not on F-Droid can be installed via the Aurora store that can also be installed from F-Droid. It is an anonymous client for the Play Store. Because I don't have the Google ecosystem syncing, I replace my cloud services with Nextcloud. I built the server and found a workaround to connect to it by passing CGNAT. And that is what I use for my notes, calendar events, tasks, news, and even backup, as Graphene OS lets you backup and restore from a Nextcloud server. If some of the AOSP included apps don't fit your needs, 
I recommend you to install the Simple Apps Utilities. There are a series of apps that can be installed from Aptroid, have more features than their AOSP counterparts, look better, are updated frequently, and are open source. I use Simple Calendar, Contacts, and Gallery. I sync some of my stuff with the DAVX 5 application to my Nextcloud server, and for 2FA, I use the open source Aegis Authenticator. Regarding Play Services compatibility, I haven't tried all apps, but for now, I literally haven't found a single issue. Dating apps work fine. I mean, no, I, I don't use those. <laughs> My banking app is reported to work perfectly without GMS, and it kind of does, but installing the sandbox meant I could use more features, and I still wonder why the hell does my banking app need to know where I am and asks for facial recognition. I could even install a delivery app and order a pizza to my house. I hate using WhatsApp, but that's basically what everyone in my country uses. Surprising it does not need GMS to work, but the cloud backups are broken, even though I have read that you can replace them with Nextcloud, so I'll have to check that. Battery using Graphene OS is great. I left my phone turned on all night and the percentage didn't even decrease, but if you install the sandbox services, even if they are sandboxed, I did notice a decrease in battery life, but there's always the possibility of that being placebo. You always get the latest updates and the phone is constantly checking for them. I have gotten like 3 or 4 updates this month. I also run the latest version of Android 13, so a lot of credits to the developers for that. I haven't tried proprietary Play Store games, but I don't think you will have issues with them if you have the sandbox installed, even though if they depend on Google Games or any app in general depends on a Google login, it won't work unless you signed into an account, which kind of defeats the purpose of de-googling. It is recommended to use the sandbox and another user account without signing in, but for gaming, an alternative would be to install emulated games, so if you prefer that, just download RetroArch from their custom FTROY repo. For maps, there are multiple options. You can use an OpenStreetMaps client from Aftroid, install Waze or Google Maps with the sandbox, or using the web container version of Google Maps that you can find on Aftroid. The only caveat to buying a cheaper, older pixel is that some of these ROMs, like Graphene OS, follow the official update schedule of Google, so this phone will become unsupported in like 2024, when the extended support finishes. But Calyx OS still updates the Pixel 3, and there are a lot of other ROMs, so it's up to you. Still, if you prefer the latest in security and privacy, you'll have to stick with this one. Graphene OS includes some security security and privacy improvements over AOSP, like allowing your pen to be scrambled, preventing over-the-shoulder attacks, or rebooting itself when you're not using it to encrypt the phone again, to not store the decryption keys in memory, or enhancing the protection of launched apps, which takes some more seconds, but it doesn't bother me. Other than that, I'm greatly satisfied with the experience, and I don't plan on switching for a long time. Even if my Pixel broke or got robbed, I think I would still buy an older Pixel because of the great value and flashing options you get. I'm aware of the A series of newer Pixels, but they still don't add a high refresh display and are kind of expensive compared to other budget phones that already include them. In the description, you will see all of the apps that I used in this phone if you're curious. Thank you so much for watching, goodbye, see you in the next one.